There's a lot of different explanations people give when they try to explain drone racing. You get to be Superman, you know, put on the goggles and you get to fly. You have an out-of-body experience, you become one with the machine, you get to go where you want to go. Over the last few years, drones have made the transition from a tight-knit group of hobbyists to the mainstream. And now, for better or worse, it's not unusual to hear the buzz of a drone flying above you no matter where you live. Out of this explosion in popularity grew a new sport, drone racing, which typically has machines maneuvering around and through obstacles at speeds higher than consumer drones. And the competitions vary from freestyle tricks to speed. It's attracted a group of enthusiasts ranging from gearheads to gamers, and companies like ESPN and others have made big investments in the so-called sport, making the competitions bigger and flashier. With the growth of the sport, various leagues have popped up across the country. In some ways, I think drones have become a more affordable way of kind of wrenching on a vehicle. A guy who might typically, you know, wrench on the engine of his Mustang all weekend long can't necessarily afford the Mustang, he can afford the drone race. Unsurprisingly, drone racing has become a very male-dominated sport. But one woman is emerging as one of the best in the world, Zoe Stumbaugh. Zoe not only races, but engineers all of her drones. Zoe is pretty remarkable. She's one of the most outspoken and outstanding pilots in the community. She was ranked number two in the world for freestyle. Increasingly, she's starting to hit the podiums in racing as well. She's also an innovator. She's constantly developing new hardware. And she's a fierce competitor. She wants to win, and she takes it very seriously. I'm here in Santa Cruz to see how Zoe prepares for an upcoming competition in San Francisco a drag race with pilots racing head to head. It's all about speed and engineering. Actually, I was just kind of printing out some parts for another setup. Okay. Right? So I've been printing this all night long. It's taken me eight hours, I think, for this print. So I was sleeping while that noise was constantly going on. It was driving me insane. Okay, so here's your printer right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In theory, this machine goes up to 170 miles an hour. Uh, we built it to spec to beat the current uh, world record of 163 miles an hour, which is pretty insane for a drone right now. This is an interesting event because we've never had drag racing starts where you're going full throttle off the line. So your launch is like a big deal in this race. I know my launches are a little weak, so that's gonna be the one spot that I'm gonna have a hard time with. It's always practicing on our simulator right now with a course that's exactly modeled after what she'll be racing on in San Francisco tomorrow. She said she's logged like close to 10 hours just going on the simulator in preparation for the race. With the track, I was just trying to get the layout of it down, which I do, I can close my eyes and imagine it. I got into racing because I couldn't get out of bed. I had a medical complications that uh, kept spiraling out of control. My freedom was riding motorcycles. I was work on them on the weekend at a local motorcycle co-op here in Santa Cruz. I was debilitated. I couldn't do anything. And finding, you know, a little drone at a hobby shop, I got into drone racing and I got into flying competitively. I found that thing that gave me a spark in life again. What's it like being one of the few women pilots? It's kind of been disheartening. But the last few months, I've seen a lot of amazing women get into the sport, pick up drone and goggles, and actually fly amazingly well. But it is alienating. It's kind of lonely. I mean, it's taken me a lot to try to earn the respect of my competitors. I mean, it's not a very female-friendly sport right now when it's being promoted as this kind of like 20-something guy thing. Like, that's specifically the demographic they're targeting. What's so scary about a woman, woman potentially beating a bunch of guys in drone racing? Zoe's brought us to one of her favorite spots as kind of her stomping grounds to practice. She's going to fly her hexacopter that she's going to be competing with tomorrow for the first time. Sorry, I haven't even... <laughs> I think that was a battery failure. 
It felt like I was going at least 130 on the pass through here. That was fast, dude. That was the fastest ever flown this machine, and that wasn't even full speed yet. So how do you feel about tomorrow? I mean, if I lose, yeah, it'll suck. At the same time, I'm competing against some of the best pilots in the world. You know, I can't beat myself up too bad because I'm gonna be surrounded by some amazing people. We're at the Palace of Fine Arts, which is where today's drone race is happening. It's not exactly the place you'd expect for a drone race. There's $5,000 on the line, but I think for Zoe, she's more concerned with really proving herself to the rest of the pilots and the drone industry that'll be in the audience. So we're gonna catch up with Zoe and see how she's getting ready ahead of the race. Who do you think is kind of the one one pilot that you have your, your eyes set on that you need to beat? That's always the question. The toughest like, who, competitor. Who's the toughest competitor? Myself. I mean, you know, it's always yourself when you're out here because you're like constantly focused on the competition and as soon as you start focusing on somebody else, you kind of lose. Colby is really fast. He's kind of my rival right now as far as speed goes. I'd really love to beat him. Do you feel confident about the, the course setup? It's been a little slow start today, so we haven't had as many practice runs as we were hoping to get in so far. So I'm kind of nervous. But it's fucking cool, right? Yeah, that's all I care about. It's cool, it's gonna look cool, it's gonna sound cool, it's gonna go fast. Green is go, guys. A lot of you guys didn't go on green, that may be the practice thing, but number just so you four know, is go. It goes one, two, three, green is go. Zoe made it to the quarterfinals. This race is about to begin in a few minutes. What's going through your head seconds before the race is starting? How do you get in the zone? Just put the goggles on and kind of find my peace. And as long as I can tame the beast, I think I'll be okay. So we just lost the quarterfinals. I almost got you, Colby! I almost. Colby is one of those pilots that I really revere and respect. He's kind of my local rival in a lot of ways, so I'm not gonna beat myself up too much. Oh my god. Oh my god. So Colby, the guy who actually beat Zoe in the quarterfinals, just won the whole thing. I love the race. I can win races, and I've won races. So seeing him take that is pretty cool. And the hexacopter I built is done. We built this machine just for the competition. And it goes way faster than anything we got up into here. I'm just looking forward to going home and opening that thing up out in the field and seeing how fast it really goes because this small area does not contain what it is. That was the fastest I've ever flown a machine before. And that was the goal, was to build something faster than anything that I've flown. And um, that's mission accomplished to me. You know, drones have allowed me a way to get back into the world around me. It fuels my reason for living. That's why I love it. It's being a monk, it's having superpowers. And that's the really hard thing to describe because it's like a way of life. Despite having lost the race, and even through the pushback she's experienced in the largely male-dominated world of drone racing, she's proved herself by competing against some of the best. When a race is said and done though, win or lose, I think Zoe's happiest in the field across from her house, flying her drone for fun.